everyone welcome back to Anbus Hobbies so in our previous video we have set up the spring security uh, with our spring boot project so in this video uh, we will see how uh, the spring security implementation works and we'll also see the internal workflow of uh, internal flow of spring security and what are components involved in it let's jump into the project so in our last video we have added the spring web and then spring security along with that we have added dev tools and lombox those those are for you know future projects and also have uh, i'll be adding mongodb when we are discussing about the db um, including db for the authentication so in this video we're going to look at um, authentication through uh, a static values let, let, let's say through application properties and then uh, in memory um, you know authentication over the username and password so I've just created an endpoint here uh, which is named as greet um, so let's try to access it this is direct uh, risk controller you can just access it through v1 slash greet let me try to access this one let's see what happens um, yeah so let me go to v1 slash greet and that uh, leads to a sign-in page where uh, you don't know the username and password right so let's go to the console and see whether we have anything see here uh, as of now i have not configured anything inside here and um, so spring internally creates um, uh, spring security creates a password for us and that's a predefined password that we can make use of so I'm just going to use this and just put admin uh, like any any username so that should work uh, let me say user and then this password yeah there you go so it should be user and the password so there you go we got the hello world that's in um, you know so now uh, spring security allows us with the username and password so how the spring security now is it it's working right so we should know the internal workflow how it is working so let's see how it is working so in a, in a normal project so you'll be having a api you will just directly hit it and then get the response when you include the spring security um, that will inter you know uh, that will interrupt everything uh, every request which is going into the into the application and it has set of filters you know um, Def by default there are around i think more than eight filters available i know that will be executed one by one uh, in the form of uh, chain of chain of responsibility and those all filters will you know propagate one another and then at the last like once the last filter is done if it is authenticated and everything is good then it will propagate the request to the api and get the request and then um, you know get the response and send it back to the um to the browser right so let's see the internal working of um, Spring Security. Let's say you have the application of so where you are entering the username and password. In this case, I've entered user and the password which, I, which got generated from Spring Security. What it does is it will go to the Spring Security filter. So uh, there is one filter which will check uh, whether the security context has the username, um, uh, uh, no, user authenticated already. Right, so this will check, but for now, this is an initial authentication, so it will not have anything. So it will go further and then it will check the authentication. It will, uh, it has, it will propagate the request to authentication. So this authentication, it has a filter like basic authentication filter and other stuff. So you can define your own authentication filters too. So that I will discuss in further, you know, future uh, videos. So the authentication uh, will make use of the authentication manager who is responsible to take a uh, to check what all authentication providers we have configured and then um, the authentication providers internally uses the user main user details manager um, or the user detail service which will you know uh, help uh, help the authentication manager uh, to authenticate the user right so there is also password encoders so we'll discuss about different kind of encoders we have so the user details manager is responsible to get the details of the user either from the db or if in this video we're going to see how we can configure it from the in-memory database so this is going to get it from there and then uh, it will validate so if we have so we will discuss on the method which are available on the user detail service and the manager and then right so once that is validated so it will go back to the authentication manager where he um, it will create the authentication token and then it will send back to the authentication and here the spring security again here in this case uh, the user is authenticated so it will set inside the spring security 
the context and once that is done it will just respond back and then give the users um, the like in our case the hello world as the response right so this is the internal workflow and that how this is how the internal security filters are working so now let's go to our project and see uh, what modification we have done or we can do right so now uh, this is making use of uh, uh, um, you know, it, it's an it's an auto generated uh, password. So let's say I want to create uh, my own username and password. So what I can do is I can just say Spring Security um, username and the password. So username I'm gonna give it as um, let's say admin, and I'm gonna give this as admin. So let's restart the application and see how it works. So now we, sh we, we should not be getting this particular thing which is auto generated. So we should see uh, a normal application start and then we can make use of this to username and password. This is an um, plain text password. So we will see how we can encode all the passwords and store in DB and retrieve them back and all those stuff. So now we can head to the browser. Try to hit the URL again. Localhost. V okay so now it has redirected to me to this login page now we can say admin admin there we go it is authenticated so it, it is using the username and password which is given in the application yaml uh, let's say this is one username and password that you have given here but um, it, this is this is not suitable for a production application right so let's see another approach that we can know uh, follow so let me go ahead and, and create a new uh, package uh, is config and let me create a class let's say this as and let me annotate this as a configuration and enable the web security call enable web security and let's create a bean of um, being of user details manager right so user details service so that is that is what is responsible as per our um, uh, diagrams if you look at here the user detail service is what responsible to give you the list of user and username and password or you know it's kind of a repository which you give with the details right so let me go ahead and uh, create a bean of uh, user details service service and then uh, let's see user service and what i'm going to do is i'm going to create a uh, in memory username and password so i'm going to return new in memory user details manager so it will it is going to accept the list of uh, user details so if you look at here so there is a constructor which is available inside this which is going to accept the list of um, user details so let me go ahead and create this one here collection of user details um, new array list so I'm gonna create a couple of users here let me copy paste what I have here to reduce the time let me paste here so this is user details and then user details one so it is this is going to be user and the password and this is going to be let me say admin and admin right so i'm going to add both of them to the users collection so let me say users dot add user details and the second one right here so is that it so i'm just going to copy this let me minimize this one and here let me send this one so now there is a bean which is um, uh, ready uh, for the spring security to refer because it was using a default one uh, which doesn't provide any user details so now we have configured our own user details which is an in-memory user detail manager which is going to provide the user details to the user uh, you know you know in the form of user detail service because if you look at this one it is you know it is uh, extending uh, implementing the user details manager which is in, in turns extends the user details service so that's how we are returning the in-memory user details manager with the list of users as user, de user details service right let me go ahead and restart the service and see let, uh, whether this works or not right let's jump into the browser and uh, create a new session and localhost 
slash v1 greet I think this application is still starting up yep it is yep it is going it is going to start now yeah see if you look at here it's all using the default password encoder and other stuff you, you don't have to so this this all are deprecated so we can um, use no hop in you know before this password and all those stuff because we'll discuss all the stuff in, in you know in our future video let's go into the browser and try to hit so the user is already authenticated so let me go ahead and create a new session so that um, let go here local host it's eight zero slash b one slash greet. See there. So it is asking for username and password. Let me give user, and uh, we have given a test password. P a s s w o r d. There we go. It is working, right? So we can either um, we can we can also log in with admin and admin as the password, right? Uh, and that's how it should work. Oh, it uh, is not working. I think we have to give slash b1 slash greet because it is it doesn't have any um, URL to redirect. So that's how. So both are working now. So this is how the in, you know in memory database you know in memory details manager uh, should be configured. But these two approaches are not recommended for protection. So what we can do is in our uh, future video in our next video we we are going to configure. Uh, MongoDB which holds the user details and we will see how we can configure the MongoDB to store the user details and make use of the user details which is stored there to authenticate the user. Thanks for watching the video. Uh, if you like the video, please uh, don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.